Hey, everybody. Thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome and glad you are here. On this channel, we like to talk about simple crypto passive income strategies that are implemented on blockchains with utility use cases and that solve business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right here at DeFi Divi on Twitter. As always, none of this is investment advice. I am not an investment advisor. Okay, so we're going to get into it. We're going to unpack the reasons for the backlash related to uh, FIP01. This is backlash from the XRP community. We're going to go over the reasons of uh, why it was proposed in the first place. We're going to break down this, this Hugo Fillion tweet. And one of the traits I have, naturally, I was just born with, this isn't some skill I developed, is to be able to see both sides of the equation. So I'm going to go over each one of these tweets, and I'm going to, I'm going to weigh out on both perspectives. Because there are some of these tweets where I'm like, you know, okay, I, I don't know about that. And other ones, other tweets here, I'm like, yeah, totally, I'm totally on board. And ultimately, you know, if you watch this channel, you already know my stance on FIP01. You know, I'll say at the outset right here, I'm a yes. I'm going to vote for it. By the way, voting is uh, open. So you just connect your wallet. You can go to uh, portal.flare.network. You connect your wallet, MetaMask. I'm going to do mine with Bifrost. You can just do it right on your phone. Yeah, you should vote. Whether you're a yes, whether you're a no, get it out there. This is what this is all about. This is what decentralized distributed ledger technology and communities are about. You know, vote. Vote on this thing. If you don't want it to happen, get out there and vote. If you do want it to happen, get out there and vote. So that's it. That's what's happening. But before we get into this, before we break this down, I am going to show you how excited I am about the crypto market right now. Look at this. This is, uh, this is pretty much like clockwork. I think, what, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago, combination of Jim Cramer saying it's not too late to get out of crypto, and then Jamie Dimon over at Davos saying, yeah, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, just like pet rocks. There's no value there. Two great bottom signals for me. Whenever you see mainstream media going completely negative, it's cl oftentimes it's a bottom signal. And now, right after those, just like clockwork, Bitcoin, yeah, it was like 15,000 maybe two and a half weeks ago. Now we're at 23,000. Ethereum was around 1,100. Now it's at 1,600. XRP was in the low 30s. Now we're at 41 cents. Even Cardano, <laughs> even Cardano. I don't know why I sound like I'm negative on it. But yeah, no, that's a good project. No matter how you cut it, that's at 37 cents. Solana, I just never really cared about. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Matic, amazing. It's a good one. I, I got some Matic recently. I wish I would have got it when someone was telling me to buy it at three cents, but that's okay. I think that one still has a good ways to go. SHIB, that's funny. I'm glad to see it's doing well, though. Bitcoin Cash, I'm not sure why that's still here. XLM cranking. I'm so glad right here I made myself dollar cost average down my H bar to around the eight cents range because <clears throat> I started buying that thing at about 44 cents, somewhere around there during the bull run. I just thought, you know what, this, now that I had time to research it, I just happened to research it during a bull. And uh, I was like, well, whatever. I think this could go, who knows, one, two, three, four, five, ten dollars $10 someday. And so I started buying then. But with the gift of this bear over the last year, I got my DCA down to around 8.1 cents, somewhere around there. So I'm close to break even on that. By the way, my portfolio is now in the green. So I'm happy about that just from this little run. So there is the power of dollar cost averaging. Not financial advice, of course, but I think anyone would tell you dollar cost averaging is powerful. I'm not telling you anything new there. Okay, that's enough of that. I hope you're happy about the market. I am. Let's get into this. So, Hugo Fillion, breaking it down. And I quote, I understand why some people are annoyed with FIP01. It feels like a betrayal, but let me give you a few of the things we are dealing with. I like this right here. He's kind of acknowledging feelings of some members of the XRP community because they were told and promised one thing. And now there's a proposal that you can vote on. And if that proposal passes, what you were told changes to something else. And so that would feel like a betrayal. I like that he's acknowledging the feelings here. Uh, and then the final sentence, but let me give you a few of the things that we are dealing with. And then the next one. And I quote, singular airdrops don't work. They get dumped before the ecosystem can develop, and the dumping then prevents the ecosystem from developing. Okay, so I do see, I do see two sides here. And don't get me wrong, I like Hugo and I like Flair, but I see two sides here. 
And I see what he's saying. So side one, part of me goes, well, if people really understand what Flare Networks is doing, they understand the value, they understand how cool this thing is and the problems it solves, they should buy up everyone's dumped tokens regardless and put them to work because they believe in the project. And I do believe that's true. But what Hugo is saying, well, is if we, if this proposal passes and we force the airdrop recipients to delegate instead of them selling and in hopes that other people discover how powerful the project is and buy those dumped tokens, this does make it easier to provide liquidity and, and pump, pump the, uh, the price providers, if you will, because they're going to need incentive incentives to run the infrastructure, to run those price provider apps and nodes. And that liquidity, without that liquidity, there's a greater chance it can dump. Now, yeah, so that, that's, there's two sides there. That liquidity ideally should come in just from people going, this thing's super valuable. I'd be dumb not to buy this. But with this proposal, it kind of gives the thing a chance in case, in case those people aren't around to buy it. So if this proposal fails, what needs to happen is some real clever growth hack and PR to keep getting the word out there uh, and raise awareness to the entire crypto community of how powerful this thing is so liquidity can get in there as quickly as possible so others will buy all the tokens that are being dumped. Okay, let's move on to the next tweet. Uh, and I quote, the prior 36-month automatic distribution model is flawed as it seems that no additional work has to be done to receive the token and hence continued excess liquidity. So this one here, probably many in the XRP community, or not many, but the ones who are feeling betrayed, if you will, probably think something along these lines. And I thought this too, right? It's like, well, I wish you would have seen this flaw when you originally were, were offering this airdrop because many of us may have considered this in our decision to move around our XRP to be able to qualify for the airdrop. Like some people didn't have to do any moving around. Maybe they just kept it on exchange or maybe they already had theirs in a Ledger Nano. I am not a big Ledger Nano fan, so I actually did have to move around XRP. I moved it from a Trezor to a Nano and then I kind of moved it back off my Nano to my Trezor. And now I have this XRP going back and forth. That's not, you know, it's not like epic whale stuff, but at the same time, I'm sure it's, you know, is this a movement of value that probably it could be like, why is this XRP moving? I don't know. No one wants to do that. Now, on the other side, I can see how Hugo did not know possibly that this was flawed because this was originally proposed. Really, it was just like, well, this is just going to be DeFi capabilities for XRP and then a few other coins, you know, the Litecoin and Doge. But it's changed into so much more than that. It's actually a completely different project now. It's really, it still offers all that, but it offers like this state connector. The whole, the whole thing is right now is just about connect to everything and connect not only blockchains interacting with, with each other, talking to each other through the Flare network, but also Web2 projects being able to talk to blockchains through the Flare project. For example, what, 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 what does that look like? So I don't know any other blockchain right now, maybe, maybe something through Chainlink possibly, but not done this well where you could have like, let's say a use case example. Let's say you wanted to have your crypto auto-willed to someone else. You didn't want to go through the you know, government probate, blah, 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 to have the crypto done. Well, imagine a day where there is a, the ability to connect to some sort of Web2 application that, is, that says, oh, yeah, this person is officially deceased. The consensus is decentralized, and that's verified as true. And now that triggers a smart contract, and then it automatically says, okay, well, when that happens, we're going to move a, an amount of Bitcoin and Bitcoin value from this deceased's account to the person's children, if you will. So it's things like that that we can't even think of. There are so many possible use cases. That's just one that comes to mind. But I think ultimately we just wish that the flaws in the distribution model would have been figured out back then, long ago, when we were originally offered the airdrop. And I get it. Startups, they kind of figure things out as you go along. No one can see everything in the road. If, you're, if you've ran a startup, if you've ever tried to start a business, you figure it out as you go along, because if you try and figure it all out before you start, you're just not going to go anywhere because it's impossible. You only can see each turn as it comes up on the road. You can't see like 20 turns ahead. 
Okay, and the next one, uh, and I quote by Hugo, FIP01 intends to solve the issues with a prior model whilst minimizing the effect on the original intended recipients. It lowers inflation massively, less overall tokens. It allows for smoother redistribution from those that don't want the token long term than those that do. Yeah, I get rid of that. So you're solving the issues with the prior model and then smoother distribution for those who just want to delegate and wrap and keep this thing long term. I fall into that camp, which is probably why this proposal never really bothered me that much and actually turned into a yes as the more and more I researched it and the more and more I got into flair. Okay, and then the next one by Hugo, and I quote, it is designed to smooth the dumping and allow the ecosystem to grow. And the lower inflation means that if every original XRP recipient gets fewer tokens, they may in fact, end up with the same percentage. So the same value percentage, right? Because, yeah, lower inflation means higher, more buying power for one token. If you have more tokens with higher inflation, you have less buying power against other currencies anyway. So if you have lower inflation, you're going to have more trading power against other currencies. I agree with that 100%. I don't have a, a counter argument to that one. Uh, okay, the next one, and I quote Hugo, then, depending on participation rate of a wrapping, they may end up with more. The model is inspired by Bitcoin, where those that do the most work in the early days, wrappers and infra providers, are rewarded the most. Yeah, and that makes sense. And not only is that model inspired by Bitcoin, that, that model is kind of inspired by any sort of, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're uh, doing a startup and you want to reward your early employees and your, your co-founders, you know, they're going to be work you're going to be working harder in those early days probably than you are in the later days as things become smooth and stable. And so you're assuming more risk, and with that risk you get more reward, potential reward upside. Okay, let's get into the next one by Hugo and I quote, "You may not like FIP01. You may think I am being shady and putting it forward, but I put it forward because it is what I believe is in the best interests of Flare ecosystem over the long term." Yeah, so I don't, I don't know why he wrote that. I don't think he was being shady. Maybe some of the XRP community do, and, and I, get, I get that. I didn't think that. Uh, okay, the next one, and I quote, Flare is now a much bigger project. Flare is now a much larger project, intending to provide value to the entire industry and maybe even expand the industry. To those that say we are abandoning XRP holders, one, the only people that receive flair just for holding the token are those from XRP. Right. And yet you're still getting your your um, your free flair in either proposal. Could be a little less, could be a little more. And if it's a little less, it could still be have the same or even greater purchasing power due, due to the lower inflation in the proposal. Okay, number two, FIP01 has been designed to minimize the negative effects whilst rectifying the old distribution model. Right, okay, great. And then number three, Flare is the only major VC-backed project building around the XRP ecosystem. Yes, we are also building around other networks, but we retain XRP. The community do not understand how impossible it was to convince the crypto VC system to back anything that touches XRP. And then number, f and then this one, this is the last one, I believe. Uh, and I quote, but I persisted because I believe Flair stood with XRP and pushed to get backing. We have put forward a proposal that we think is the best, in the best interest of the network and the ecosystem. Now choose if you will stand with Flair. Now choose if you will stand with Flair. Okay, okay, well, yeah. I mean, I think I kind of broke down each one. Let's look at some of the responses in here. This one from at Z33EAX, uh, and I quote, it took two years for the airdrop, but only after the initial distribution of 15% suggest FIP01. Yeah, no, that's wrong. Yeah, this proposal was made a while ago. Yeah, that's what I said, about six months ago. It was not something that just happened now. It's just the XRP community, myself included. I, if I wasn't, if I didn't start creating content and learning about Flare, I would not, I probably would have thought, just forgotten about this thing until it was airdrop time. And that's what happened with a lot in the XRP community. So they probably didn't see this thing coming. They're like, oh, this is new. What is this? You know, it, it, the proposal has been out for a while. Okay. Yeah. And then this response from Mickey B. Fresh, big influencer in the XRP community and the Flare community. I highly recommend following this channel if you're not already. And also checking out uh, his website. 
And I quote, this clip is from an interview with Tony from Thinking Crypto, recorded 18 months ago. If you are truly interested in Flare and have followed content regarding Flare, FIP01 should not come as a total surprise. Yep, agree there, 100%. Uh, this one from Flare Monk. Hugo, you betrayed no one. People who didn't want the token and were going to dump got to do so. And people who are excited for the ecosystem now get, now get even more. Absolutely no brainer for this to pass. This one from at Hugo Lipens. Hope I'm pronouncing that right on Twitter. I voted yes with 1.5 million Flare. All my family and friends voted yes. Only sellers of the 50%. And Conbase customers, Conbase, <laughs> ouch, Coinbase, oh man. Yeah, centralized exchanges, not a fan. Anyways, so yeah, a lot of comments and a lot of supportive comments here as well. So I, I think um, Hugo starting this out with, it feels like a betrayal. Okay, I get that and acknowledging how some may feel betrayed, but no, I, I never thought Hugo was shady. I never thought he was doing a betrayal. I can see two sides to some of these tweets, and I already went over that. But ultimately, I'm a yes on this. We all, no one executes a startup, no matter what type it is, perfectly smoothly. We all, anyone who's ever tried to do this, like I said earlier in the video, you just kind of figure it out as you go along. And if you are good at execution and you're a visionary, you get kicked and you, you know, you're, you're down, you get back up again. And that's what's happening here. This project has changed quite a bit. It's been audited by some of the biggest auditors in the world, one of the biggest auditing companies in the world, Trail of Bits. So I'm excited for it, especially with the problems they're solving. So let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you feel betrayed? Are you going to vote no? Are you going to vote yes? Now is the time to vote. So yeah, connect your wallet. Uh, Buy Frost should be pretty easy to figure out. MetaMask should be pretty easy to figure out. That's it. I'm going to wrap this one up. I will see you in the next one. I hope this video finds you well, and I will talk to you soon.